Welcome to For Book Lovers Only Live Radio, where we discuss amazing books written by talented authors. For Book Lovers Only Live Radio is a proud member of the Village Connector Media Network. If you love books, we have a home for you. Now time for your host and chief book lover, Rob Brown. Hey, book lovers and book fans, welcome. My name is Rob Brown, your internet radio host and chief book lover, and this is For Book Lovers Only Live Radio, where if you love books, we have a home for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope your Sunday is fantastic. We are here in sunny downtown Laurel, Maryland, as always, and ready to serve you, the book lover, and introduce you to new and exciting authors and top-notch books for both your education and your entertainment. Uh, today, we welcome to our studios coach, speaker, and author, Abigail Wurf. Uh, who will be telling us about her book, Forget Perfect, How to Succeed in Your Profession and Personal Life, Even If You Have ADHD. But before we dive into today's interview, I wanted to cordially invite uh, you, the book lover, to join our Book Lovers Club. Uh, it's free, and with your membership, you'll get access to updates about new authors and books. And we'll also be sponsoring contests to give out free gifts to our members and only our members. So it definitely pays to be a member, so don't wait please join today. Just visit www.forbookloversonly.com and submit your name and email address. It's that simple. It's really quick and easy, and we look forward to welcoming you to the club. So thank you. So for today, we're going to be addressing the subject of ADHD with our guests. But first, I wanted to share with you an interesting statistic. 60% of children with ADHD become adults with ADHD. That equates to about 4% of the adult population, or about 8 million people. So there are quite a few people uh, who have ADHD, and maybe even more who have it, but haven't not been diagnosed and don't even know that they have it. Uh, and today's in-studio guest is going to educate us uh, about that. She is a performance and productivity coach for entrepreneurs and professionals uh, affected by ADHD. In addition, she works with college and graduate students affected by ADHD to help them finish their degrees in a timely fashion. A certified coach, she has been trained in life coaching, business coaching, ADHD coaching, ADHD couple coaching, and creativity coaching. She is the host of the weekly podcast, Survive and Thrive, Managing Life with Adult ADHD, and the author of Forget Perfect, How to Succeed in Your Professional and Personal Life Even If You Have ADHD. Abigail Worf, welcome to the show. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. So before we begin, I know, you know, this is a topic that's really interesting to me because I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't know a lot about ADHD, so I'm, I'm mm -hmm. happy and excited that you're here. Uh, educate us a bit on the definition of what ADHD is and how it differs from ADD. Because I think a lot of people use those terms interchangeably and they're probably yeah. wrong. So educate us about that. Well, ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. And some years ago, you were diagnosed with either ADHD, the H for the hyperactivity, or ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder, without the hyperactivity. But recently, in the most recent diagnostic statistical manual, they now use just ADHD. But there are many people still in the ADHD community who either still call it ADD, or if they're not a hyperactive ADHD person, they just they use ADD also. So technically, you're supposed to use ADHD, but you know, I figure people should use what they're comfortable with. Okay. That's that's good because like I say, I, I, I didn't know if there was a difference between mm -hmm. those two terms and I, I've used both and I've used them interchangeably. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm probably wrong about <laughs> that. So, uh, well, what prompted you to write Forget Perfect? Well, I'm a coach, so I work with people with ADHD. And a lot of times I'm very into um, really actionable tips. And my clients would go, where's this written down? Do you have this written down so I can take this home? I mean, I, I, I'm going to need to refer back to this. And I was like, uh, not really. And then it was, well, you should really write a book so I can have that book and take it home. And, you know, because I can't process everything in the moment. So I want something to refer to. So not only did that encourage me to write a book, but to make the book something that you didn't have to read from front page to back page straight through. Because people with ADHD have focus issues, impulsivity issues. So I wanted a book where you could basically open it up wherever, look up the things that you want to learn about and get tips on, and then you know just go right there and find out what you need to know. Okay. And, and who do you think... Who is the book designed for? Is it just designed for people with ADHD or like who is your ideal reader? My ideal reader is someone with ADHD, but I also think, you know, just in this day and age, there are a lot of people who have issues with completing things, 
um, with starting things, initiating tasks, with um, managing their money, their relationships. So I, that's why I put in the title, even if you have ADHD. So that way people would feel comfortable if they don't have ADHD, but they might have trouble with what we call executive function skills. And those are the skills of like planning, organizing, prioritizing, organization, things like that. And people with ADHD tend to have a greater difficulty with executive function skills, but most people have some deficits and some executive function skills. So I think they can still get value. But I really wanted to write a book that was not only for people with ADHD, but was written in a manner that would be conducive for them to use it. Okay. And that's one of the interesting things about this book, because when I was going through it and I was learning, you know, some of the techniques and strategies that you mm -hmm. teach in the book, I understand the book is designed for people with ADHD, but it's just so much useful information that people who don't have it, you know, can benefit from yeah. it as well. So the book has, you know, a variety of different, different uses. What did you learn personally from writing this book? The title, Forget Perfect. I'll be honest, I had the title um, at, right when I started writing the book. But at the, I'd never written a book before, and I was very scared to do it because um, people with I have ADHD and people like this tend to have trouble really not only initiating a project, but following through to the very end. And when I got towards the end of writing this book, which I foolishly thought would take me three months, but <laughs> nine months later, um, when I thought it was done, it wasn't done because we then had to start editing, and we went through about... 10 edit, you know, 10 drafts of the editing. And it was really hard for me to do that. And at a certain point, it just became hard to let go. So I really had, I, you know, what if there's a mistake still in there? Right. So I really had to listen to my title and say, you know, you do the best you can, and then that is good enough, you know, and then to move on to the next thing. Because a lot of people with ADHD have um, perfectionist tendencies, but they don't accomplish that perfection. So that causes them either not to start or to give up when they sense that the project is no longer gonna be perfect. So I really had to embrace the whole idea of the book at a level that I had not realized I had not embraced yet. So so, so by that, that line of thinking, when, a, when you're talking to a person, they say, oh, I'm a perfectionist, oh, I'm a perfectionist. Does that kind of tip you off and say, hmm, maybe that person might have ADHD? Or? Yeah, if, if, they, if there's someone who says they're a perfectionist, but they also talk at the same time how they just struggle to, to get those things done, you know, that's when it sort of tips me off. Um, not all perfectionists obviously have ADHD, but I think a lot of us, we anticipate doing a really great job on things, but then we start to develop a history where we don't. And that kind of sort of stymies us from actually getting started because once we start, it's no longer gonna be perfect. But in our head, if we don't start, right. it can be perfect. Well, I, n I never, I never, thought of it from from that perspective what is in this book that would surprise people that are affected by ADHD I think telling them a couple of things one there is no secret rule book I think a lot of people with ADHD think that people without ADHD have a secret rule book that guides them and everyone else is just as confused as we are so no secret rule book another thing is just because you need to get things done, there is no way to necessarily enjoy everything you have to get done. So I don't ever pretend that you'll love doing all this because some of this stuff, it isn't fun. If it was, we would do it. Right. Interesting. And, and what are some common challenges that people with ADHD face on, on a daily basis that maybe people with, who don't have ADHD don't face? Well, um, getting out the door to get to work can be really hard. We really struggle with sleeping often, and then we struggle with getting up in a timely manner, getting things done and not getting distracted to do other things. You know, it just the process of getting from bed to door can be really difficult. So it's, um, you know, it's like, how do you focus yourself to get out the door? And then how do you focus yourself to get home? And when you get home, accomplish the things that you need to accomplish to keep your life going. What does what should a person do, or, or what are kind of like the signs that a person should should pay attention to to say, wait a minute, I think I may have ADHD, or mm -hmm. my husband, or my wife, or my yeah. child. Like, how does a person know when they should even get tested? Well, if they're struggling with fo focus, impulsivity, um, often we have struggle with directions. But the thing is, it's that it starts when you're a kid, and it's for a sustained period of time. So if you're struggling for six months, you don't have ADHD. But if this is just historically, 
you know, what your life has been like, then it then you might want to get it checked out. And I always recommend that you either go to a psychiatrist or a di- diagnostician, a word hard to say, <laughs> um, to get a full workup and to make sure, because there are a lot of things that can mimic ADHD that are not ADHD. How long does, like, the analysis take? Or- well, it depends. You know, um, if it's like a psychiatrist, they, they usually take a history. And if you're willing, sometimes they'll even talk to people in your life to it, but not if you don't want them to, but to just see the patterns, because it's really looking at the patterns for the symptoms. And again, seeing if it's been in a sustained manner. Then if you're doing a diagnostician, they're often looking for um, learning disabilities and ADHD, and about 40% of people with ADHD do have learning disabilities. That's actually how I found out at 30 that I had ADHD was because I was starting graduate school and I needed to be retested for my learning disabilities. And the woman said, well, aside from the ADHD, and I was like, wait a minute, I have ADHD, and it just it explains so much. So I encourage people, if they think they might have it, to get checked out because it just you no longer feel like you're a bad person. There are reasons you're struggling with these things, and there are things you can do to help yourself. Well, let's talk specifically um, about some of the strategies mm-hmm. and methods uh, in, in the book for managing one's life with ADHD. And I want to start with one, a very, very important topic that we can all relate to, money. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about some of the challenges with regards to money and how what the book teaches about people with ADHD and how they should approach money and financial issues. Well, the impulsivity issue is really critical with money because we tend to just be very impulsive people, so impulsive spending. Um, and also we're not great about thinking in the future. There's a well-known psychiatrist and author named Ned Hallowell who puts it really well. For people with ADHD, there's now and not now. So it's not like there's now and then the future. There's just now and not now. So if you're only living in the now, you're not putting, you're not creating a savings account. You're not contributing to retirement. You're not paying attention to things like um, you know, how much interest you're paying carrying so much debt. So like one of the, the tips I give people is when they're looking at their bills each month, I want them to write down somewhere tracking how much they're paying in interest for all their loans and credit card debt because they have no idea how much they're paying. And when you start seeing that you're really throwing money away, you start to become a little bit more conscious of your actions. Another thing is to try to impede your ability to be impulsive. So for example, maybe if it's over a certain amount of money, like let's say $100, you have to do a 24-hour waiting period before you buy that thing. So you have time to go home, think about it, maybe bounce it off some other people, and then make the decision whether you should do it. So trying to make informed decisions and not just making decisions in the moment. Um, You know, some people, they stop using their credit cards. That can be a little drastic, but I think you can sort of have a rule of, you know, how much money you're going to spend a week and that it counts both the cash and the charging and also to hold yourself accountable by really tracking this stuff, which is incredibly boring for us. But you don't have to track it for the rest of your life. You just need to track it to start seeing your habits and then figuring out ways to manage those habits. Well, there are some great strategies. What about career and unemployment? Well, I don't think it's surprising that uh, about 30% of people who have ADHD are entrepreneurs and become entrepreneurs by the time they're 30. Um, The national average is 14% of the population becomes an entrepreneur. So, and I think one of the reasons is a lot of us with ADHD don't like working for other people because we don't do well with being told what to do. Um, We tend to be a little sensitive about that. So... So one route you can go as an entrepreneur, and my biggest advice about going and becoming an entrepreneur is start something where you have some assistance from the beginning, whether that's a virtual assistant or whoever, to take care of the things you're not going to take care of so you ha- can have the money coming in. So, you know, they say pay yourself first when you're an entrepreneur. Right. Pay yourself, pay someone else first to make sure that they're invoicing and getting the money in for your business. Now, for most people who are working for other people, I think they really have to be aware of the social issues that come along with ADHD. Um, We, the not uh, liking to be told what to do, struggling with the long-term projects. So you really want to try to create a situation where your boss is supportive to you. And to do that probably without telling them you have ADHD, because there are a lot of people who still have very negative attitudes about ADHD and just think it's another term for being lazy. 
So you want to try to have very clear deadlines on projects, have you know, sub-due dates where you can check in you know, midway through, and to always remember, just because people aren't talking about a project, that doesn't mean that project disappeared. It still exists, and we, we're responsible for getting it done. So it's just really being very vigilant. What about, uh, and this is something obviously that we can all relate to and mm-hmm. is a very important part of this book, relationships. Um, now, I imagine you're, you're talking more about personal relationships, mm-hmm. uh, and probably professional relationships as well, mm-hmm. but personal relationships. What does the book teach uh, about that? Well, if you're a couple, for example, there is um, often, let's say the man has the ADHD. Well, people with ADHD tend to be quite creative people, and when they're on, they're really on. So this is a really exciting person to get to know. They're fascinated by you. You're fascinated by them them and then you get married and about a year down the line it's terrible because people with ADHD and that impulsivity issue are attracted to bright shiny new objects well after you've been married a year your partner's not necessarily a bright shiny new object so you start to revert to some behaviors that you may not have shown while you were courting so it's really about adjusting expectations and finding ways to understand that people live differently and you need to find a way to live together but also situate each person in a situation of success so perhaps like if you're dealing with chores and in a couple equal may not be the same idea of equal that you used to think of it you know, for, for people with ADHD, it's usually that they better for them to do short tasks that have immediate payoff. So maybe it's dividing the tasks in a way that the person with ADHD is really playing to their strengths and not their weaknesses. And then in work cases, you know, people with ADHD can be not so great about, you know, divulging too much information or talking in a way where they sort of do what I call like a preamble, like the Constitution, where Mm -hmm. they sort of, you know, set the context, you know, of the story rather than just saying yes or no. And that can really be frustrated for people in a work situation where they just want the person just to answer the question. So those are just some of the tips that are in the book. Uh, One of the things that you you mentioned in the book, and it kind of hit me like a ton of bricks, and I loved it because I agree with it 100%, and I always tell people that, and people always look at me crazy, and I'm like, no, this is true. You start off one of the chapters, you say time management is a lie. Well, tell us about that. Well, you can't manage time. It's immutable. I mean, time exists and continue to exist the way it is, so there's no way to stretch time. But you can manage your actions, and that's really what time management is, is manage your actions. And what I suggest you do is to do a little bit of an evaluation and look at what are your big whys? Why are you here? What are you meant to do? What are your values? You know, make a list of some of your values and also look at your needs and wants. And needs are things you must have, like food. Wants are like having a television set. But understand your needs and wants and what your goals are. And then question each activity and see if they're in alignment with those, you know, with what you've written down. So it starts to eliminate activities that aren't in alignment with your values. And you also start to add activities based on are you really pursuing what you're meant to be pursuing. So instead of just constantly trying to shuffle things around, Let's get really clear about what actions you should be taking and what actions should be put on the back burner. Well, these are, these are some great techniques, uh, you know, both for people with ADHD and people who, who don't have. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in the book that I'm going to be uh, using myself in, in organizing and executing my daily activities. So this book is just so incredibly useful and utilitarian. Um, you now, in the book, you give a list of famous accomplished people in history who have mm-hmm. either had or are believed to have had ADHD. Abraham mm-hmm. Lincoln, Dwight Eisenhower, Eleanor Roosevelt, General George Patton, Bill Gates, Andrew Carnegie, a lot of really famous accomplished mm-hmm. people. I imagine that there is a, a large, I wouldn't say a large majority, but there are many people in the population of the world, for that matter, that have ADHD that haven't been diagnosed. Yes, like, there, yeah, there really is. And um, all we can do looking back historically is to look at the people's behaviors to see if it's likely they had ADHD. Um, the thing is, is that 
I think everyone has maybe some issues with certain things at certain times in their life. It's really about that you're having the specific difficulties and you're having them for your whole life, or at least in your youth and that you grow out of it. As you open the show with, you know, many don't grow out of it, which was used to be thought that you only had ADHD until you were like 18 and then it magically disappeared. So I think that there's a lot of really successful people with ADHD. And I think one of the reasons they've become so successful is because they've learned to delegate the things they don't do well and really try to align their life with those actions that matter and trying to farm out, beg, borrow, steal, whatever, the things that are really hard for them to get done that they don't really need to be doing. You know, I think that's very important to understand that you're not a failure if there's some things that are difficult for you that you have other people do. And, and for our book lovers and fans and people that are tuning into this broadcast, watching, listening, uh, what is kind of like the most important message that you want them to get out of Forget Perfect? Well, that, you know, doing the best you can is really doing the best you can. And there's no point in ruminating and and upsetting yourself if things are not perfect. And that really, you know, all we can really expect of each other is to do the best job we can. And for different people, that means different things. Everyone has their own definition and each one is just fine. You know, that it's really okay. And I wanna make sure that all of our book lovers and our fans are able to get in contact with you because I find this book fascinating. It's, it's incredibly useful. There's a lot of information in this book that's gonna help a lot of people. So I wanna make sure uh, that they're able to get a hold of you and are able to kind of follow you through, through social media and through your website. Um, your contact information uh, is, uh, your email address is info at abigailworf.com. Mm -hmm. And I wanna spell her name for all those that are listening. It's. Uh, Abigail, A-B-I-G-A-I-L, and last name Worf, W-U-R-F. So it's info at abigailworf.com. Uh, your website is www.abigailworf.com. Uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, Abigail Worf, all one word, and Pinterest, Abigail Worf backslash. The book is Forget Perfect, How to Succeed in Your Profession and Personal Life, Even If You Have ADHD. Abigail, thank you so much uh, for stopping by. We look forward to learning more. Thank you. It was my pleasure. We're out of time, but be sure to join us in the coming weeks. We have quite a few authors lined up for both in-studio and call-out interviews that you don't want to miss. My name is Rob Brown, your internet radio host and chief book lover, and this is for Book Lovers Only Live Radio, where if you love books, we have a home for you. Take care. I'll see you next week.